I guess the ethics and private property and ECP. So I guess that makes sense as the order. Yeah. Okay. So uh, do you want to go first on the ethics? I, mean, I don't really have like a specific like so, argument, you know, like it's not like I'm not here to necessarily say attack any specific thing because I don't really know exactly where you are. On the yeah. Spectrum. So like uh, my defense for the ethics of private property is that uh, uh, the the libertarian ethic private property or property rights can't be rejected in argumentation without uh, being caught up in a performative contradiction since you're okay. disputing can the you, very same norm you presuppose. Can you explain that in English? Okay. So our argumentation is uh, if the only form of peaceful conflict resolution where two parties engage in uh, propositional exchanges um and okay. there are two pre well there's really one presupposition but i'll say two for simplicity's sake the the presupposition is self-ownership and oh. what stems under that would be non-aggression since this is a peaceful uh conflict resolution non-aggression has to be implied uh but self-ownership is a presupposition since it's a precondition for argumentation that is you must have the right to your, to make exclusive use of your thoughts and actions to engage in argumentation or any rational action. And so because of this, uh, and I'm going to be using property rights and self-ownership interchangeably because they're both the same thing, or self-ownership is, is a property right. Um, so rejecting this right to private property or arguing against this right to private property cannot be done so because not one, because you've presupposed it, and because of this, you've given an a priori justification to it. And so to attempt to argue against it is a performative contradiction. Okay, so define performative contradiction. It's when you dispute the very same norm you presuppose. So it's like the sentence, uh -huh. I am dead, is a performative contradiction because you have to presuppose yeah. that you're alive to say that you're dead. Okay. So can you explain better like exactly what you mean by that so not like the definition but kind of the idea of how exactly would arguing against it fit under that because uh property rights is a presuppositional norm to argumentation how so um because it's that which is required for it like what i said before you have to have you have to be you have to have the right to make exclusive use of your thoughts and actions to okay be so why are thoughts fitting under the same category as an actual private property like like a business or like an object well no that's just what self-ownership is it's just stating that um the individual has the right to himself his thoughts his own thoughts and actions he like he's property mm -hmm. of himself um and and we would call this a property right uh, okay but i feel like that kind of has is too broad of a definition from what we're talking about because like, for example, like, I don't specifically identify myself as, like, a specific, like, type of communist belief. But at the same time, like, no one that is arguing for, like, the abolition of private property is saying that people shouldn't have self-ownership over their thoughts. Oh, no, no, no. We're not rejecting that. We're just saying we're, – we're, no, we're not saying that. We're saying that mm -hmm. to, to argue against a property ethic is impossible. To, to, to – and so because of, like, we, we – by engaging in argumentation, essentially, you're giving a justification to the property ethic. So to dispute the, the, our, this right to private property or to dispute the ethics of it is a performative contradiction. And then at that point, what? that's basically saying you can't argue against it yes. because it's some weird semantic thing. No, 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 no. Th this, this has nothing to do with semantics. I think you're just – I think you're okay. coming at a misunderstanding. I'm it as like a hierarchy. So it sounds like you're saying that there's like a fundamental ethic – of like private ownership, I guess. Yeah, yeah, because like uh, I, I would consider myself like a deontologist, right? And the system which we ground our ethics in, or at least the, to my knowledge, I'm, I'm not the smartest ANCAP, obviously, but uh, we, we ground our system in ethics and, and property rights. Like the NAP is just the logical deduction of self-ownership or, or property rights. And and that's why, uh, are, are you a utilitarian or a consequentialist? Huh? Are, are you are you a utilitarian? Like, how, how do you judge yeah, morality? In a sense, like everything is utilitarian. Well, it's like with economics, or I, 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 well, yeah, but like, 
like talking about like well how, how do you how do you decide if something is moral or not? Like, what, what, what do you judge well, morality based off? Yeah, it's sort of like I don't really say like specifically utilitarianism because there's kind of a lens of like subjectivity over it, but it's just the fundamental idea of you would want the most benefit and the least harm. Okay, but the, in yeah, I'd agree with you in, in the context of economics, but like in judging right from wrong, um, well, I think like like because like we. Idea. Uh, as deontologists judge actions or morality based off action itself if if an action abides by uh this natural law of morality which we would say is the nap um mm -hmm. therefore like any any action which uh abides by it or does not violate it we would consider moral um but when talking about this uh, the, we wouldn't say that the consequences matter because it's only that the action matters but for utilitarians or consequentialists, uh, I'm sure you guys would argue that, uh, well, if an action or any action which brings the most utility to a society or if you're a consequentialist, that's consequences to society or group of people, you'd argue that would be moral, correct? Um, I mean, it sort of depends because when you make an action for the intention of having a long-term benefit, then yes, technically to you that is moral, but there's also like the sense of like a, that we don't know what the consequences are and we don't know if something will lead to like a utilitarian outcome. So yeah. technically, even if something ends up justifying the means in the end, that doesn't necessarily mean that that action when you did it was moral. Yeah, but I completely reject that the ends justify the means at all. I think like, it, you could, could you, could it, it, with this like moral is, framework, you, you could justify literally anything with it. Like I mean, society that's, values, that's, like, that's, like what? Technically speaking, like, if you do something bad and it ends up working out better than it would have. Wait, otherwise. wait, what constitutes bad under your like just, just framework? If something did constitute bad. Well, yeah, I know. But like what constitutes bad? I don't see the relevance of that question. No, like we're talking, we're, we're talking about morality, I'm right? I'm talking about so, my necessary moral framework with how I determine it. I'm just talking about the idea of the ends justify the means. Well, do you not support that? I don't okay so i support it and i don't support it in the sense that one i believe that technically if something ends up working out in the end then the ends did justify the means but okay so then because you, we you... can't know it, that it would have happened that means that that action when it was taken was not moral okay if so yeah you yeah so so if the if the yeah so you're just screaming like utilitarian or consequentialist uh, I do, do. Do you care which one I call you? Because like, I mean, they're they're both pretty similar. They're I mean, like, I don't know. I don't think I really fit. In, like, I don't think the ends justify the means exactly. Well, I, I mean, well, what well, you do like basic like basically you're saying like, oh, if the, if the <laughs> if the ends of it weren't good, then it didn't justify the means. But if they were, well, no, good, not that it justifies the means. It's that it just worked out. Yeah. Okay. But we're talking about morality, so we have to justify our like, actions. Like, if I do something and then it ends up having a positive benefit. That doesn't necessarily mean the thing I did was moral. Okay. Okay. So then, you okay. So then you're cons you're going to consequentialism. Then you're, I'm yeah. going to define whatever I said. Then I guess I don't know. Yeah. 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 That's consequentialism. So, okay. Like, I don't think it makes whatever the person did was. Okay, I don't think. But like, if if like if society if society values that like no matter like um if if it was like the best outcome but if it had the best consequences for society then you would deem if we that could it actually happened. measure that outcome before it happened then it but would you can't do that different. because the action has to happen exactly, you that's can predict, exactly yeah you can predict and, and that's the thing with like consequentialism right it's it for, yeah, well, so it's like, like rather than anything you, you, you can flow, use right? it to justify anything and you yeah, just like, don't know like yeah that's what action was saying. yeah okay all right so like um would you use this uh, like moral framework to justify the seizing of the means of production? Well, I don't know. Like for me, I think whatever the means of production are that you would be seizing, like I don't personally believe that like if society were to like implement a type of communist ideology that we should force it on people because then I don't think it would even work. And I think that's true for pretty much anything. Because the point is that it's supposed to be like a collective society that everybody lives in. But if the collective society is a society that people didn't even want or agree to, 
then you can't have the necessary cooperation. But what if the majority of, of, of the society agrees to it? Then would it be fine? And that would, yeah, I would say so. Just because that's, you know, even if it doesn't work out, that's like the experiment that society is choosing to produce. Okay. Like so like example, one example of that is like the 1984 election. Like I don't really like Ronald Reagan personally, but he won in pretty much like a 49 state landslide. So at that point, you just had to accept that that's what the people wanted. Okay, but okay. So, if fifty-one percent of society, like, um, let's just talk about America for simplicity's uh-huh. sake, would want a com, uh, would, would over the forty-nine want a communist society, then you would, mm-hmm. then would you say it would be justified for them to, to, to use force society. to seize the means of production? I mean, not necessarily, because one, where is that distributed? So, for example, wait, why does that matter though? If if we're only talking about morality, what okay, is the, what does the end matter? about the united states we have 50 different states so obviously there's going to be a tons of different states that have want nothing to do with communism and maybe some other states do so wait, but what does that matter if wait what does that matter if over half of america wants it and the other half doesn't like if if you'd agree because if that's you agree not with the society me that, agreeing to it if it's only 51 percent that's because it's more it's split so and wait perfect. then what constitutes society agreeing to something if all well, or no not, like the, the lines i would say is kind of arbitrary then yeah, well, I mean, it has to be. There has to be a line somewhere. Like, exactly, you but like, what, what's the line for that? You, it's impossible to answer. And second of all, like, 51, 49, like, that would be based on, like, polling data, right? Like, you couldn't even know if there was 51%, if there was. Well, no, we're just, like, we're, we're, just making, we're just making this assumption for, okay. like, for, for the argument's sake. So, so like, okay. so, so would you, so, I'm going to ask you this again. So, would you say that if the fifty-one percent of America, like no. it, it doesn't matter what the numbers are, it's just a matter, it's just fifty-one percent over the forty-nine, no. would want to see you wouldn't argue that you would have anymore. to have some kind of sense of like objective measuring, not ah, fully. Ah, well, okay, okay. So what would okay. you? Okay, yeah. So so what would you use to 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 to, to objectively constitute like? Well, what right wrong? the main thing would be obviously like research and studies to know the effect of whatever policy is going to be implemented. Wait no, but that but that's only predictions though. You don't you, well, you won't mean, okay, actually know the full outcome. It, it doesn't necessarily like okay. I feel like you're kind of looking at it too deeply because what else are you going to use? Like you have to use uh, some property thing. rights. That's how we can, and that, that's exactly what my entire moral framework is grounded in. If it abides by I this natural law of non-aggression, it's it's and it's and this is grounded in property rights. If it doesn't violate property rights, then it's a moral action, and any action that does not violate property rights, okay, so be done. Can you, circle back and define property right again okay so so um well i guess i'd have to okay so uh, so private property is is just um uh the uh, uh, sorry a scarce natural resource that is homesteaded by an individual and is under exclusive jurisdiction of that uh, individual so so that's private ownership um mm-hmm. and we ought to have a right to that uh to this piece of property because it's on uh, because it's under exclusive jurisdiction of an individual, right? Like I, I would define, I mean, I can go by like either like Rand's, de- I think Rand's definition of, of a right is pretty good, but uh, I guess another definition of a right would just be like a moral entitlement to something. Um, and so like, mm-hmm. if we want to go like deeper into it, like pr- uh, the right to private property would just be done through like the home setting principle, right? By mixing your labor with like a, a natural resource like by the earth it becomes in essence an extension of you so therefore you have a right to that thing uh mm-hmm. yeah so like would you agree with me on that well i mean it's sort of to me it's like the idea of like like if i own my own house for example and that's like my house i wouldn't agree that people should just like say no you can't have a house anymore why wait why is that though because it's like mine like Wait, but like, okay. Explanation: It would be my house. Okay, so like, so what would you ground it in to say that it would be morally wrong for them to take your house? Then, how would you? Well, it's sort of like, I don't think it necessarily matters per se. Like, it's more of the idea that, like, you know, it's everybody having a mutual understanding and empathy that it's something they have, and you wouldn't want to take that away from somebody. Yes, but what concept is this though? Like, what okay. what, what is the, like? What, what, what you're like just trying to get to say it's based off of private property, but I don't wait. Really... What wait? Repeat. What you are you said? trying to say that it's based off of private property? Yes, that, that's what I'm. That, that's my point. It's like the standard for all well, morality okay, is private property. About that is that 
that's just not true because w why private property? Like there's always a deeper meaning because private property is just like a like a criterion by which you're achieving whatever no. like, you're using. No, 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 because private property, um, no, because the, the, the moral system of like the, the NAP or I would say just like deontology. Um, like it's a well, for like well, it would just be a deduction from these like the, this property, right? I mean, okay, yeah, so, okay. so, so, so yeah, to argue yeah, against like the importance of it, you'd have to argue, you, you'd have to argue against property rights itself. But then that just brings us back to you can't Wait, do can so repeat? argumentatively. Can you repeat the last part? Um, so like uh, this our, our moral system, right? Of, of like the the NAP and like deontology is 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 just a deduction of property rights. But, uh, or, but to argue like why property rights, we just have to argue about property rights itself, not, not yeah, so the moral system. Like, but, but you can't you argue against property you, rights argumentatively without performatively contradicting yourself. I, like pr property okay. rights are an absolute in everything. Like if we okay, want to use like okay, You define private property as like a scarce thing that people have like their full ownership on, right? I, sh I, I mean, that's poorly worded, but sure. Yeah, like, I'm, you know, I don't want to go into the whole explanation, but... So by what mechanism would like, okay, because basically, if you say that it's a performative contradiction to argue against property rights, then you're basically just telling people they can't argue against it at all. Yes. But, I, yeah, we've already we've already outlined this. Yes. That just literally makes no sense. Well, how? How? how because does... it's just like a wording and philosophical like stance that you're taking. Well, yeah, we're talking about political philosophy, aren't we? That makes eliminates all possibility of being able to argue against something. Well, no, okay. So you can argue property rights itself, like, okay, like if if we want to say like exploitation or something like like property being theft or whatnot. But to reject mm -hmm. like this right to it or to reject the ethic of it would be a performative contradiction. That's well, not I'm to not say that you can't that argue property rights have to like form with their own personal or private property. I'm arguing against the idea that basically that right or that idea shouldn't be used to like exploit or other people. exactly exactly yes so that, that's what i'm saying like yeah, you can't so reject you can't thing. reject the right to private property you can't you can't argue this right to private property but you can argue about private property and and that's yeah, what i'm saying nobody was saying that I wasn't arguing like i wasn't doing that in the first well, place well we were just arguing like the ethics of it and i was giving you my defense of it that like it can be argumentatively justified because you presupposed it. So to argue against it would be contradiction. This justification you just given to it, which would just be a performative contradiction. But and so then I guess for for us to move forward from this and to not uh, deviate from this position, we'd ha you'd have to argue that instead of bringing up like exploitation or wage labor being theft or whatnot, you'd have to argue that head on. Because arguing anything else is just deviating from this position. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, th this would just require you to argue this. It's, yeah. But what's like the point of that? Like honestly, like. Well, it's it's to justify property rights. It's it's the ultimate justification for property rights. Okay, like I disagree that it is a justification for whatever you're saying, but at the same time, it doesn't even matter if it is or isn't because. No matter what, you can still argue about property rights anyway. Yes, but but arguing like the ethics of it, right? Because I've given th this is my ethical justice. Well, I don't think it's unethical to have like your own private personal property. Well, then okay, so itself. this just goes into semantics on like the distinction. Yeah, exactly. So then private this, property. we should move on to a different thing about the actual like practical application. Okay, so are we done? Are we done on like ethics? Do you want to go to yeah, economics? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Mises's economic calculation argument is that the factors without a proper pricing system, the factors of production cannot be properly allocated without a proper pricing system. Mm -hmm. And therefore economic calculation would be impossible. Now it's important to keep in mind that the ECB and these are just misunderstandings that I've commonly heard and I want to I want you to refrain from making them. So I'm mm -hmm. going to just outline this now that the ECP is not making an argument exclusively against central planning. It's making an argument against any economic system without private property. So this could be central planning as completely decentralized system, uh, market socialism or whatnot. It, it could be any of those. Just as long as it doesn't have private property, the problem still applies. Okay. Um, the problem is not about the distribution of resources. That is like 
how resources and their final product, like after production, like food or clothing or housing or whatnot, are, or whatnot are distributed, mm-hmm. it, or are distributed. It's that the factors of production, which would just be anything used in the line of production, the means of production, the resources used in it, how those resources are allocated and inputted into different production processes. That's our argument. It's not. It's not about resource distribution. So bringing up like, uh, like oh there's more houses than people like, Oh, there's a food crisis. Like that's not a, no, that, that doesn't address. Okay. So I have a question. Yeah. So I get what you're saying that it's not about that, but are you saying that those things are not diametrically opposed to each other? What? Okay. Like, so for example, if somebody said we have more houses than people, so we should just give them the houses. Like that was what a common response that somebody would well, say. Well, that's not that. That's you know, I know this isn't about you the ECP though. Yeah, you said it's not about that. So, yeah. would you say that if somebody agreed with that, would that still fit under the ECP? No, because no, that, that that no, it just goes to the distribution of resources. We're talking about the allocation of the factors. No, that's not exactly what I mean. Like. Okay, basically what I'm trying well, to say. Well, this is what you're talking about. Like the house, like a house would be like a finished well, like, product. The, it would just be considered like, a resource. Like a finished product after the line of production that uh, needs to be not, distributed. Okay. Like people need housing, right? Okay, so you we need to distribute part. this housing amongst like this people the people who need it. But that that's not what the ECP addresses. No, I know, but I'm not saying that that's not what it addresses. I'm saying like, okay, like if you have the ECP and you have like these things that you're saying about it, like would that lead you to disagree with the idea that you couldn't just give people houses? That's not relevant to that. That's not relevant to this topic, though. Like okay, that, that, that's a, just a completely topic. like different topic. So, like, okay. yeah. So, how would you? So, how how without a pricing system, would you would you allocate the factors of production without private property? How would you do well, that? Well, the way I view it is that for it to me, it kind of depends on the thing. Like, I feel that because the way you're determining prices is based on a subjective demand. Well, yeah, that demand's constantly things changing. That makes perfect sense. Like, if you're trying to produce, like, a movie or a video game, and you know there's no demand for it, then why would you produce it? You're just wasting the resources. Exactly. But the thing right. is, like, how do you okay. know you're wasting the resources is because, like, these resources used in a different, like, lines okay, of production my, my are reduced question, to a common denominator, though. But, like, communism doesn't have a common denominator, which we can reduce these commodities to. So, like, you can't know whether or not to produce something I mean, because for me, like, I'm not advocating for, like, there to be no prices. Like, like my ideology, like, I'm not saying that we should, like, eliminate, like, this whole price determining So, would you use, like, the socialist, like, labor vouchers thing? Well, okay, what I'm trying to say is, like... For some things, like if you're only determining like wh- what is being produced based off of the like supply and demand, basically, and it's subjectively based on well, what that, people yeah. are demanding, yes. what if there's a mismatch between what people demand and what's actually necessary to produce? How would you? Well, yeah, that? that yeah, we just call that market disequilibrium. But mark like that, there you can't ever reach like fully reach equilibrium and keep that like. Constant, well, because like, market I'm conditions saying, are always changing. Like, I'm like, not saying like, oh, if there's more supply versus more demand, so you know, so then what you are you saying? Price. I'm saying like, if you literally, okay, like for example, like, I don't know exactly how to word it, but basically, what I'm trying to say is there can be a mismatch between the demand that informs prices and the supply that informs prices yeah versus, that's just yeah that's just literally just produce. market disequilibrium okay so how do you address that yeah yeah m- m- market so we can't so under a market economy right even a fully like, even in the ancap society right we 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 we, we accept the fact that like reaching market equilibrium fully and keeping that constant is impossible because like we live in a dynamic economy and can market conditions are constantly changing, right? Supply and demand is constantly changing. So we can't fully reach market equilibrium, but markets are able to get us as close as possible to do that. So we don't have wasted mm-hmm. resources. Okay. So how are you, is there some kind of measure to know that that is the best way? Yeah. Prices. Pr- because prices reduce every resource to a common denominator. Like it reduces, um, for example, I guess carrots and steel to a common denominator because carrots and steel can't be compared. 
but they can be compared with prices. We can value one carrot to three, okay, like so well, one, like one pound of carrots, to like two tons of steel. That also instead, goes no, to instead of valuing them at that ratio, we can value it at an objective ratio that they can be reduced to, to let's say just $20, like one carrot to three pounds, one pound. And that's sort of like my point. Like, okay. Like, cause there's a difference between, okay. Yeah. You're going to like produce the carrots or produce the steel or whatever. Yeah. But how do you know whether or not to do how that? How do you know objectively what is the best place to put them? Yeah, exactly. Our exactly. Prices, yeah. Our prices is an objective way to show that it should go there. Because Just prices because. allow us to compare costs and benefits and decide and like whether an investment. Okay, so how, to, wait, wait, can I finish? Can I finish real quick? Yes, yeah. So, so how do you know like whether it's a good idea or not is based on like th this, uh, like costs and benefits. Like if, if, if a, entrepreneur invests in a market right and he's going to see a return of what he invests through through prices and profit and loss where he's going to price it at something like seeing given market conditions and like all that how prices are formed right and and then he's going to see a return of that and if the costs outweigh the benefits he gets from that that is if he's losing money from that then he's not going to invest in that and how he knows this is okay, through so prices and through okay. money and this is because like they can be they these these resources can be compared right so if he needs to substitute a resource because it's uh pushing the cost too high then he can do that if he needs to substitute something or complement with another resource he can do that and this is all because the only way he knows how to date, how to do this is through prices through money but without money you can't do this okay i understand that what i'm saying is how can you reliably know that whatever the prices are whatever is end up cheaper whatever is cheaper and ends up being more economically beneficial how what mechanism would you have for making sure that that is determined in a rational way. Uh, I like based off investments and comparing costs and benefits. Like if the costs are low in something, okay, but that relies on people to actually accurately weigh the costs and benefits. Our business is not rational firms because if in they weren't, general, they wouldn't exist. No, if they were in the market, they wouldn't exist. They, what? They want to be irrational in this. They want to be rational, and in a sense, there is like a sort of like survival of the fittest of what you're saying yeah, but this is all based on risk though you don't know until you like invest i mean you can still predict it right like with like uh the cost of it but you won't actually know because like, again these conditions are also changing right so you still have to count for many different things I mean, what i'm saying is it's very possible for the way the price incentive structure works to end up hurting somebody like it's not well always... we're not arguing that it's perfect no we're not I mean, we're not I mean, arguing that like it like not I everybody understand that you're not arguing that it's perfect like because okay for example like you're just talking about the general principle. So if I say Wait, principle of what principle, for principle of what it's ECP. Like, so if you're arguing in favor of the general principle of ECP and then I point out flaws with it, that doesn't necessarily. No, you, no, no, you're just asking basic questions that are coming out of like a lack of uh, just ignorant of it. I think you're just, well, I think that. you're just, just ignorant of the ECP. Understand exactly what it is. Yeah. What? Yeah. I'm just trying to understand where it's coming from. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, s after this debate, I have a video on my YouTube channel just explaining it. It's like three minutes long. I, I literally just... watched it. Oh, you did? Okay. Well then, okay. Yeah. Like one thing that I had a sort of question about that was like, okay, you're talking about like, I think it was aluminum. Like, okay, do you give it to a grill company or NASA? So what confused me about that is, okay, for example, there could be a scenario where there's an economic incentive to be able to do, to give it to the grill company because that has a like economic benefit. But what if NASA actually needs it more, even though it well, is it, it's all dependent on, on these prices. Okay. So, but what if there's like the mismatch in prices? Like, okay. Wait, wait define you, mismatch in prices. I, okay, I'm not sure what you mean. What I'm trying that. to say is like, okay. Because obviously, like, let's say NASA is doing some kind of imminent sort of work that they need to address an actual problem. Like, for example, I don't know, we have a problem with, like, a bunch of uh, junk in, like, the outer orbit. Like, we have over, like, 26,000 pieces of just, like, little space junk that can end up colliding to each other. So let's say, hypothetically, we needed to allocate resources to, like, something like SpaceX or Amazon or NASA, you know, companies that are stakeholders in that, to be able to address that problem. Mm -hmm. or we could allocate whatever resources that would be used for to another company. So what I feel like could be a potential problem in it, 
with the prices is that it could end up being the case that it's economically beneficial to put the resources economically beneficial for the person involved with that's producing the resources to like sell them to somebody who's going to use it for a less important purpose. But if we judge, if we judge importance based off prices, okay, then, but <laughs> then the it, it, no, it's that, is that there's no way to actually make sure that the prices reflect the actual importance because pe that would require people to not be greedy and be fully rational. C can you repeat what you said? Okay, okay. For example, if the grill company knew they didn't need aluminum at all and that NASA or whatever would be way better off having it then technically they wouldn't even want to buy it at all. Like they would have zero demand for it because they would have realized the actual necessary importance, but because. Well, no. Okay. So now we're describing like, we're describing like two markets. Like what's the, like what, what's the demand of each market? And like, how do you know? Like, okay, where, where so like where, 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 how do you know where to meet consumer demands? Right. Like you have demand, right. But you have different resources okay. that can be used in like the different places. Is, sometimes the demand is based off of something that wouldn't actually be beneficial. So like, for example, this grill company, wait, wait, if the wait, demand, wait, 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 if the, oh if the demand is something that's not based on uh, something that's beneficial, then the demand just isn't there. Like if okay, the no, demand is there, there for it, then it is beneficial. It will no. That's not necessarily true because of greed. So, for example, let me finish. The grill company, what? if they, if they know that if they buy this aluminum, then they can use whatever you know they're doing to produce what they want and then make a profit. That is beneficial for them in their personal lives. But ideally, if they knew that they didn't need this aluminum at all compared to the actual like some kind of imminent thing that just as a hypothetical example NASA was addressing, then their demand would rationally be zero because they know that somebody else needs it more. It should be zero in that rationally in that scenario. But wait, in wait, reality, but even then we just be at disequilibrium. If if this grill company had all the all the aluminum or, or the, the titanium. Because the grill company is inherently going to want to make a profit for themselves, their demand will be higher than zero and therefore be irrational. Wait. Okay. If if all the if all the if all the titanium is needed for NASA, okay. How do you first of all there has to be demand for that to know that. So we already know there's demand for that. But okay. if the demand for that exceeds the demand for grills, then it's going to be allocated there. Uh huh. Yes. Right. So, but but if, but, but if this grill hired. company, wait, wait, wait. Let me finish. Let me finish. If this okay. grill company is hoarding this this titanium just for greed, just to have it, because like they could they they could probably guess like oh in the future. Uh, the demand's going to come back to grills. Okay. Um, in in the long run or in the short term, that's going to hurt them greatly. Like they, they're they're not they're not making any profit well, at all. Like right? so, so they need to adjust. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And now we're going. And now we're going to be at. And now we're at disequilibrium with with okay. uh, titanium. Right. It's it's not where it needs to be. There's shortages where it needs to be, which is mm -hmm. with NASA. And there's surpluses. Right. And the, and this aluminum isn't being consumed at all because this this grill company isn't producing any grills because there's no demand for grills so they're going to have to allocate it to no NASA. For grills. i'm saying there will be a demand for grills and therefore there will be a demand but if for the demand if the demand for the rocket ships outweighs the demand for the grills and okay. that's where the titanium that's, needs to be allocated know, that's, that's exactly where it's going to be in an ideal scenario the whatever nasa is producing in this scenario would be higher demand but exactly. No so then it would be allocated there because no. it has higher demand. You're just okay. assuming that they in just that hold scenario, on to it for yes. some arbitrary reason. In that scenario, yes. But how would you make sure to avoid the possible scenario of that not happening? Because you can't trust people to actually be rational about it. Wait, wait. So you think we're not? We don't act rational in all cases. You okay. think like all like some action no, not is not cases. rational because people will want to profit. That will. You Make can't profit if there's no demand, though. If there's no demand for grills, then this oh, company okay. isn't going to produce grills. They're going to have to do other things. Okay, reset button. Okay. So can you explain what you mean about... So basically what you're trying to say... Let me let me just try to recap what you're saying, okay? And then tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. So what you're trying to say is that, rationally speaking, if NASA actually needs the aluminum, there will be a higher demand for NASA. Therefore, because NASA has a higher demand, that means that that aluminum will be allocated toward them. Yes, and this is because um, the price that they're going, they're going to, they're, they value that aluminum more than they do their own money, right? So this this girl company can can 
I raise the prices for it, right? And so because the demand is so high, right? And, and this is also to like reduce consumption and, and reduce shortages, right? But NASA is going to buy this um, based off the price, right? Because um, how do I word it? So I'm trying to I'm trying to measure the I'm trying to think of the supply and demand curve in my head and trying oh. to explain it. Hold on. So the demand curve is going to shift to the right because the demand's going up. And the supply curve, let's just assume that the supply just kind of stays the same as of now, right? All the all the aluminum because like previously the demand was the demand curve for titanium for NASA for right making rocket ships was to the left, right? It was quite low. And so we had like surpluses there and it was all allocated to this grill making company, but it changed, yeah. right? Because let's say we had a surplus of grills or every consumer who wanted grills got their satisfaction for grills, right? And so now grills aren't valuable anymore. This is basic economic stuff. This is the, the this is the law of diminishing marginal returns, right? Mm -hmm. So then the demand for grills is going to shift to the left, right? And the supply, the supply is going to go higher. So it's going to shift to the right. So... I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of this off the yeah. top of my head. Okay, and so then, and and let's say the man out of nowhere just goes for NASA, or or let's say NASA just wants to put these rocket ships and increases, to, or and, and just for whatever reason, demand increases uh, for for these for these uh, rocket ships. Whether it just be NASA or different companies trying to make rocket ships, the demand increases. Um, these grill making company with all this aluminum, they're not producing any more grills because, well, there's no demand for any more grills. And and now we have a surplus of, uh, of sorry, titanium. Uh, and then we, we, and whether or not, like we could just argue to make this more simpler that uh, NASA has a bunch of spare aluminum, uh, okay. but I, I, I just, sorry, all right, actually, never mind. That's kind of irrelevant. Um, and so this grill company can allocate this at aluminum to these different industries because the demand is higher and they see that they can turn a massive profit from doing so. And so this, uh, and this effectively um, brings this uh, bring in this, in this industry, like producing rocket ships closer to equilibrium, right? So we don't have shortages of aluminum. Um, and the, and the way this has been done is because the demand is high, right? And this is reflected off prices. Um, and so because of this, the, the aluminum is allocated to where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Right. But just saying that, oh, they could just hold on to it for greed. Really, that's just an argument based yeah, off emotion really because they, they wouldn't because they because you I know you'd agree with me that it's in the it, the primary goal of a business is profit. But you can't make profit if there's no demand for anything that you I, can produce. No, that's my point, though. So like, OK, what if the consumers are demanding grills more then, for example, like NASA would be demanding their aluminum. So what okay, if that so then so people? then the so it would be best rational that then the only rash then the rational use for this like aluminum or titanium to produce grills would be there, and therefore they ought to be allocated there to that's the grills. We know yes to the grills. Okay, the so demand that's sort of that. my problem with this, this scenario because based on like the market and the amount of demand, rationally in terms of the market, it would make sense to allocate it toward the grills. But what if not allocating it toward NASA has a negative long-term impact that would end up hurting? Well, we people? don't know that. Wait, wait, but we don't know that. It, it, again, this is all entirely dependent off the demand of NASA. How bad does NASA need that? Because if they need it bad enough, right? And 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 um and this grill company wants to provide or needs to provide like th these um. And then this also it's sort of like this one comment. Uh, you don't know me. It says, "How will people know NASA needs aluminum?" So, for example, yes, it's based off prices. You're relying on the idea that the consumers will be informed enough about the situation to have a rational demand. Oh wait, no, it's if not about not consumers. Informed, it's about these producers, right? We're talking about well, two different still, producers. The consumers are still relevant in this scenario because if there were no consumers, then they would no one would want to buy grills. Wait, but who's consuming? Who wait? Who's consuming and who's producing these space shuttles? Because we're talking about NASA. Hold so, on. so, like in this instance. Hold on. The only thing that it, matters would just be NASA. So the only reason a grill company would want to sell grills is because there's consumers who want to buy grills. Yes. Right. Okay. So if the only reason, so like, let's say in this scenario, NASA actually needs them more for actually an objective long-term benefit. And let's say we could study that. We knew that all this space, space junk stuff would, you know, They'll kind of cascade into each other and like hit satellites and that would you know ruin gps systems and satellites and 
like SpaceX is like internet satellites. That would mess all that up. Let's just say that. But there was a higher demand for grills because of the consumers hypothetically. So, yes, if so yeah, and that's the titanium so allocated there that, for the grills, then we would consider that, that rational economic grill. calculation. Okay, because but that is a rational economic calculation, but it's not rational because it would actually lead to a negative long-term impact that worsens life and society. Oh, oh my God. Okay. What constitutes rational action? Something that has an objectively good or measurably predicted good benefit. Like if we that's, can reasonably that's know- That's what constitutes rational action. Just good benefits. Like if we can reasonably conclude that something would have a positive impact, then we should do it. And that and that constitutes rational economic calculation. Exactly. So my point of that. Oh, okay. Is, so wait, 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 wait. If consumers, if consumers value this grill, right, uh -huh. but they can't get it because, because for whatever reason, whether it be scientists or whatever, predict, and th and this is just a prediction. We don't know if this is we we don't know if this is verifiable. Just just because just because of this prediction, consumers can't get what they want. They can't get what they demand. Like they they their their demands can't be met for some. For, for some arbitrary reason like what they they can't <laughs> I, I, okay, do you know what constitutes rations you do you know what no, economic calculation is and what, no 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 hold on what what constitutes rational economic calculation is if okay but i don't give a shit about like economic rational calculation if it wait so you don't care that, about economics if that, no listen if that, wait, you don't if, care about economics what i said no listen okay. if the consumers demand is based off of their ignorance of the actual necessary situation. Wait, it doesn't matter though, because we're only talking matter. about this demand. Okay, just listen. Just let me finish. Don't interrupt me. Okay. 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 So if the consumer's demand for grills leads to the grill company wanting having a higher demand for aluminum than NASA, then economically speaking, whoever's producing the aluminum will allocate it toward the grill company, right? Sure. Okay. So if they do that, but that demand of the grill company is based on the demand of the consumers and the consumer's demand is based off of one in ignorance of the actual necessary situation that NASA would need to address no. and two, or they don't care, then that no. means that there is a irrational demand for grills. No, 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 no. Their demand is just is just their demand. It's just what okay, they want. That doesn't make it right. But that doesn't matter. It's just it doesn't matter that, no, no. It's it, just that that's what constitutes rational economic calculation. Is if the consumer's so demands still are be met. Objectively bad outcome in this scenario. Wait, but you don't know that yet. If it hasn't happened, you're just making a baseless prediction. It would be irrational if we could reasonably conclude that it would. Like if we wait, can, but how do you know that? Wait, 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 but how do you know? Again, these are just predictions. You don't know if it's true or not. How do you if verify? We can it? reasonably conclude that NASA not addressing it would lead to disastrous non long term impacts. Then that would mean that rationally there should be a lower demand in consumers for grills because they sure, are sure, sure, sure. But how do you plan on shifting that demand? It's it's again if if the demand is high That's enough. If no way, if NASA, if wait, if NASA's demand outweighs the total demand, the 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 aggregate demand of all these consumers. But what if it doesn't? For, 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 then it doesn't. Then then okay, that would so still that constitute rational economic calculation because listen, the, the con when, when talking sure. about wait, wait, when talking about um like economic calculation and, and and what constitutes it to be rational or not, it doesn't matter the long term effects. All it matters when talking about rational economic when talking about economic calculation at all. And and this is exactly what it is. You're just you're you're, you're building this argument all off emotion. Like it's not emotion. It is, is. It is. It is. No. Okay. Because, you yes or no? Do you agree that the long term impact matters? No. No. Okay, not so when that, talking about economic calculation. Here. I I obviously understand that under economic calculation, if you base everything off of that, then no, the long term impact doesn't matter. But that's the problem with only using economic calculation because a long term impact is something should matter. Wait, but how do you know if these resources were wasted or not? What if what if these people were wrong? How do you know if they're wrong? <laughs> It doesn't necessarily matter if they end up being wrong. If we can reasonably, so then we've wasted resources. No, just, no, just listen for a wait, second. wait. But then we've wasted resources if they were wrong. Well, and even okay. if they were right, how do you know? How do you know if this is wasted resources or not? 
like yeah, how do you how can you predict what well, no wait 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 but how can you actually quantify like the specific outcomes okay. of them and how do you know that that's true how the point of it is whatever allocation people do should be rational the only way you would know if something is rational in an objective standpoint, not based off a subjective man, would be if we can reasonably conclude that will lead to a positive impact. This is not that's no, this isn't this isn't what economic calculation is, though. You're I'm not just talking making about up your own thing. I'm going beyond that. No, no, you've just no, you literally just said what constitutes rational economic calculation is if the long term impacts are, are are good. But that's no, not true. That. That's not you at all what economic no, calculation actually, is about. No, just listen for a second. I didn't say that. You did. Like no, once this I is didn't over, I can clip calculation. it and show you. I'm just saying actual rational action. There's be, even if something is economically like efficient or economically. But we're not talking about rational action. We're just talking about economic okay, calculation and whether or not, wait, wait, whether or not resources are being used where they're supposed okay, to. Well, within that framework of what you're saying, I completely agree that it would be rational to allocate it toward the grill company. Exactly. That's my point. Okay. So my point beyond that, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. My point is that that doesn't matter because it would still. And you are disagreeing with it because you say it doesn't no, matter. If, no, no, no. You wouldn't. No, you wouldn't be saying that. that. Framework is bad. What? The framework is bad because in that scenario, we would have a bunch. We would reasonably be able to conclude that we would know that there's a bunch of messed up satellites and shit. So that would be worse than – like that would just be bad. It, 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 uh, I'm, I'm at a loss of I'm, – I'm sorry. I'm at a loss of words. Like you're, you're making it sound like no matter what – no matter what allocation ends up resulting from the economic calculation that that is inherently good. Because we're not talking about the outcomes, we're just saying what constitutes okay, wait, rational wait, economic wait. calculation is if consumer demands okay, are met. Wait, wait, wait. That's how we know, and we're talking about like the use of resources. That's yes, what so is yes. So sense. yes, and that's exactly what we're talking about. Okay, but you bringing in the consequences problem. is irrelevant to this. That's completely irrelevant. Okay, then, okay, then what's your point in saying that? Because my point is under that. Because that's exactly what we're talking about. Well, I'm saying just my argument beyond that. Like, don't. We don't need to go back in service about this. I'm just saying. Okay, so then you're just driving a non sequitur. This no, is a completely saying, irrelevant. None of this okay. matters to the ECP at all. How many times have I interrupted you? Just listen. Okay, sorry. Okay. What I'm saying is your whole economic calculation thing, yes, that would be rational in that scenario. But because there's no mechanism in place to make sure that that would actually objectively, to make sure that there's no mismatch, like, you are basically that would lead to negative outcomes in this scenario, like with NASA. No, the very thing making sure that there is no quote unquote mismatch, so to speak, is prices itself. Okay, but the prices would lead more allocation being to the grill company, even though NASA actually needs it more in the long term. Oh, because but if they do, can, wait, no, but if they do and they recognize this, the demand is going to outweigh the demand of the consumers. Just saying, no, but what if it doesn't, really then it doesn't, consumers. then that's just going a completely different scenario. But if if this if if this demand actually exists, and let's say this predictions were right, and this got out to the market and whatnot, it doesn't matter. If the demand is there for it, then it's going to be okay, allocated but there. But you're... It, it's it's all based off the supply and demand. It's literally okay. based off that. But you're just disregarding this because oh, this could happen because we predicted it to be so based off uh, based off arbitrary assertions and whatnot. Like what? Okay, but all you're saying is if the demand is higher, if the demand is higher, the demand for NASA should be higher than the consumers because the Na NASA would actually need it more in that scenario. Just because it should be higher doesn't mean it will be higher because people aren't inherently rational about every action. Because consumers won't necessarily wait. No, but all wait, but but all action is rational action. All like all action, like no. every like y yes, like no. You, okay, so you reject praxeology. I reject the idea that whatever the consumers currently demand is like. like wait, okay. wait, wait. So you reject human action as purposeful behavior. So it, wait, then you're wait, con what? wait, wait, then you're contradicting yourself it. because no, all all action that consumers do, like all human action, is purposeful action. No one ever argued against that. Oh wait, wait. So, 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 what consumers demand is always is is just going to be irrational based on what? No, what, what are you basing this off? Because of? no, because you're saying that oh, if this prediction, if, if these predictions are true, then what they demand is irrational. 
No. Okay. So, so wait, wait. Yeah, yes, you are. Well, yeah. No. So, I didn't wait. Okay. So, so what? So what? What's your standard for rational or irrational action? If the consequences of a different like thing, completely irrelevant to this, are just good or bad, like what? That makes no sense. What I'm saying is. Obviously, like no one's saying that human action isn't purposeful because people do things for a purpose. Okay, like, so then these consumers' okay, demands I, are not irrational then. Okay, no. Human demands can be irrational. Then if they are, the demand in the demand in a different industry where it's needed is going to exceed this, so this current require, demand right now. That is dependent on the idea that whatever the other firm is, is also rational. And you can't always count on that. You need a mechanism to make sure. Yes, we have prices. If 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 a firm is investing into an industry, wait wait. If a firm is investing into something, whether it be producing grills or spaceships, they're going to see a return of their investment through profit and loss. But if the loss exceeds the profit that they gain, wait. Let's let me finish. Let me finish real quick. If, if the, if, it doesn't matter the long term. Right. So they're matter. always no. They're already taking into account the long term, right? If if they're if if not entrepreneurs are investing into a thing, they would not invest in that if they did not think that they would gain a benefit. Okay, what, from if, that. what if they're old and they're going to die anyway? If they're old, if they're old, wait, exactly. if they're old, so that would be, like, if they're old, then they don't give a shit about the long term impacts because they're old. They're going to die. It doesn't affect them. So they would only care rationally, economically. Okay. About the impact, uh, right? I think. Okay. Okay. I okay. We've been. We've been going in circles for a little bit. We're reaching an hour. This. Okay. You have any final, you want to do like a final statement thing? Just no response. Just, we just say our final statements. I don't, I don't think that's necessary too much because we're just, we're just going in circles. I think we should just end this or something. Cause. Cause what? Oh, I, 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 I don't know how to just put it in words, but. Yeah. I do. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, do you, do you want to end this? Because I think because we're we're constantly we're just keep going in circles and I mean, we, I'm we told each other that we want to avoid that. So like, yeah, I'm good with whatever. If you want to end it, then sure. I mean, I still have more I want to say, but it's fine. All righty. So yeah, we're just gonna end it. Okay.